Hi everyone and welcome to my nook. This is Kimberly and I'm so happy that you decided to stop by today. I am going to show you my design team project for chapter one and I'm super excited about it. <laughs> it's, it's pretty unusual and yet easy and you probably have seen it before. So what do you think is unusual about this? You're thinking, ah, oh, just another version of the sample cards. Yeah, well, no. Let's take a peek. It's a Bella Band, so it can be a flip in a book. Ooh, what's this? Oh my goodness, is that fabric? It is! It's fabric. I printed their kits onto fabric. Heaven, I'm in heaven. I also printed or dyed the same type of fabric. And I love the way it worked out. So I added goodies and it too is fabric. Look at that lace. Oh, come on camera. Is that gorgeous? I bought that from someone in France. So beautiful. Oh, are you able to see that light? Oh my, that's not good. Hold on. Okay. I don't think you can see that light now. I'll go over this a little bit more after we talk about how. And this is also fabric. And it actually is this paper. So this fabric. And then I found some more lace in a drawer. The old sewing machine cabinet antique that I have. And I don't even know when I put it in there. but. It's such a beautiful lace that I <laughs> decided to use it right away. I hope I put the right, you know what? I think this is the wrong side. No. No, I think that's the right side. So yeah, so I am going to show you today or talk about how to um, put, you know, use, make print onto fabric, and then we'll we'll make a couple of sample cards, and and this is a piece of antique um, dress fabric like um, organza. So they don't have to be salesman sample cards. I really wasn't thinking of that. This is a milliner and fancy draper. This is material they were showing to to use for either the queen's dress or maybe uh, some of the upholstery in the queen's hall. And this is, you know, popular. <laughs> so it's set up to show people. I hear my dog tapping at the door. Hold on. Okay, all right, so let's get to it. Hope I've got your, your thoughts going. So basically, you use freezer paper and you iron fabric onto the freezer, the, the side with the shine. I used the hottest iron I could with cotton and I went over it a million times. I guess you could cook it too much, but you know, I did it for a couple minutes and then I let it cool completely and then I cut the shape of the paper. So I ironed the fabric onto the yardage and then after it had dried, then I put the piece of paper the size that I wanted 
and I cut around it. I used a, a ruler. I think that was the best way. Working with the loose fabric would be harder than working with having it ironed down. That's all there is to it. And then I put it in the printer, obviously, with the fabric side down. I set my printer to normal, and, um, and I called it Other Specialty Paper. And it worked like a charm. I didn't have a single problem. I have an old HP the workhorse, and I love it. And I've done quite a few pieces. So this is something else to consider when you're doing it. And that is what color fabric to use. So you can see, hopefully, that one is very yellow and one is very white. Can you tell? This is white, this is yellow. I mean, it's just plain muslin, and this is obviously bleached muslin. Or it's not even, well, I guess it is muslin, but this is a very fine cotton. Very, very fine, high, high quality cotton that I found once again in my own armoire. Whole bunch of it, tons of it. I think I bought it, you know, I mean, I know I bought it eons ago, and I think it was, you know, sold as sheeting or something, but. It would be fancy sheets, <laughs> and I think it would be thicker, actually, for a sheet. It's super thin, and that's how I ended up getting these fabrics to be so incredibly thin that you can see through them. See, I purposely, is the bottom? I purposely wanted you, or wanted a viewer, to be able to see the dark lines through the material. I mean, what's the point in having see-through if you have a plain background? To me, there's no point. So I purposely picked this striped fabric and didn't put it on the same side as what it looks like. Plus the lines would have been, no, I guess they would have been going in the same direction. But I wanted those black lines to show you can see them, so I picked it for that purpose. But they're very, very, it's a very sheer cotton. Can you see my hands? I don't know. Let's try this one. Can you see my hands? No. You just have to trust me. <laughs> Very sheer. So, so it doesn't have much body. So depending on what you're going to do with yours, you might want to put it on more of a, you know, true muslin, something that's actually got little brown specks in it. Let's see. I brought a sample for you. Where did I put that? Okay, so this one is this, although it looks much darker, but it's the same thing. And you can see like the little brown specks that come in it, come in it. So it looks, you know, it's a cheap muslin that wasn't bleached well. And yet it's plenty tight. It's got a lot of nice body. It's perfect for this, if you don't mind the brown spots. And since I make vintage, I don't mind the brown spots. I think that's a plus. And it's still very light colored, even though, oh, this is it. <laughs> right here. This is the same thing. So you can see the brown spots aren't all that visible. So it's a good buy. So I, and I saved one of them. So you can see how it peels off the paper. Well, I saved two, actually. And what I'm thinking of doing... Well, first of all, here's the base that I put together. And how, and this is the same base as this, but I folded it here. This one I'm leaving open, and I'll just go on a journal page. But this one I folded over, so this is the back. And you know, when you when you see actual textile cards, they always have the building, if it's Oban, they always have the building on the back or some, some kind of decorating. They seldom have the decoration inside, which is kind of a pity because when we pick the fabric up, you know, it's kind of fun to see something interesting. So I think it's, um, you know, we could do either one. We could make this what we cover like I did here. It's kind of fun to see. This is the same design. Um, or 
we can let that stay the back and do this. I want to show you a couple of other papers from this kit because it's really cute. The kit that these come from is called the Ritz or Ritzy. I, I, it's their newest kit. I always get confused if it's Ritz or Ritzy. And look at these. Aren't these fantastic papers? This is actually the other side of this. Just a beautiful page. And this is a beauty. And it has... Oh, another side. I'll show you in a minute. Um, so I love that. So music is part of the theme. And then this is a large version. I did not enlarge it. This is actually the, the way it comes. Um, so it's a large version of this as opposed to the smaller stripe. So it comes in two sizes. And then this is also in the kit, as you can see, very similar, very pretty. And it is well, this is well, beautiful penmanship, like a beautiful cover or inside journal page, very fall-like. They didn't really lend themselves to the journal card though, so I went with the other. Also, in there are um, some great ephemera, really terrific ephemera. And so I cut some of it up. For example, I cut this out of the top of an ephemera card that had this on it and this at the top. And I just thought it would fit there, fit perfectly. And then another ephemera card was this one. And it also said Bone Marsh at the top, which I cut off to use on another one I'll show you at the end. And um, and then these wonderful labels are in there. They're kind of lined up. This Queen, Queen's Hall is one of them. And normally I was cutting out the white, but I thought, you know, to be different, I would keep the white in, plus there's white here, and when you pick it up, it's very white. Um, so this is a standalone, but there's like six labels in a row that are just all different words, and they're really fun, and you could use the whole strip, or you could use them individually. I really love it. I think it's so great. So fun stuff, but it's really, it's really a matter of cut and paste. You have to cut and paste to get these types of things going. All right. So one more thing I want to say is that it seems to me, I haven't taken this off yet to know for sure, but when you print on super thin, um, I think it graded out. Did I not bring a sample of the real thing? Oh my gosh, I didn't print one on paper. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, this is it. I mean, this is, this is the music paper. One of the sheets is this. So this is normally around that. It's a very cranberry. So this one is more, almost more accurate than that. It's warmer and it's thicker. And I think it, it actually is a more accurate depiction. This ends up being lighter and this is warmer. So just keep that in mind that if you go white, white, you're gonna get a different color than if you go the beige. Okay, so what I have in mind, you know, and I cut this in this shape, otherwise, I don't think I would have left this on, but, you know, it's not a bad thing. But I am thinking about a few things I might do to cover it up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut... I'm going to cut... I'm, my thought is I'm going to have one in that cotton and then the other in the other cotton. So it'll be a true sample. And lay it down on top of it. It's gonna, I'm going to cut it shorter, too. But you get the drift. And I think it'll be fun to actually use. So let's see what we get. Let me take this off. 
Now, there's a lot of bias with fabric, in case you don't know that. So you don't want to just on an angle. You want to just slowly try to bring it down as much together as you possibly can. Oh, and you can reuse these muslin things for a while. I think I've used them both three times now. And there might be enough to do more. I will be finding out. Be very precise in your cutting though to get it, you know, to get your printer to not find a reason to mess it up. Don't have any threads. Make sure it's exactly the right size. I also took duct tape and went over my cotton so that all the little pieces that might be there got picked up. Like there's some hair from my cat or dog. Um, they got stuck in there. So, you know, I got as much as I could, but I suggest you do clean it up. All right, so now, to be fair, let's take this away. And let's see what we get. So fun to experiment, isn't it? Okay. Can you see both of these pretty good? Let's see. There we go. Okay. All right. So this shows much more um, difference, a difference between the different colors. I mean, it's just a lot lighter, and therefore you see more detail. This one, to me, looks more vintage. This looks vintage, too. So does the original, to be truthful. And it was a fabric, I'm quite certain. It might have been on, on the wall, but it doesn't really change that it was originally a fabric. Um, chintz this would be a large scale chintz in the day and um i like i like this i think i would opt for this in the future hope you I hope you're getting a good sense of the color they're not that different the red is the most different part i just turned the light to be more on it but close up, this is more pink. This is more light beige. This is darker pink. This is light pink. This is a very light gray blue. This is a darker gray blue. This is a cranberry. This is a, a rose. Yeah. Okay. Fabulous. And in terms of how they feel, honestly, because this is such full coverage, it doesn't feel that different. It, it doesn't feel that different, even though this is super fine and this is not. Do you see what I mean by fine? Do you see the difference in the size of the yarns? Can you see them? The beige one has thicker threads than the one on the, than the white one. Beige, white. Okay, so this one you wouldn't be able to see through. This one you can, in spite of the fact you couldn't really see my hands. In the camera okay so now this is what I'm going to be filling so next is to determine I said this this side is that side reversed and slightly less wide so let's decide which side we need yeah that's gonna be perfect by the time I cut off the white and cut off some of that brown it's gonna be just the right size and then I do this on each one um, I love this flower. I think this is a little repetitive. So if I went with this, it'd be too, too wide. I like some of the background to show so that it's clear you need to lift. And I leave the white on because it might be the only thing that I end up sewing or gluing down. I'm going to cut that off, of course. But I like this. I like this look. Yeah. 
So that's going to be <clears throat> on the top <clears throat> because it's the lighter one. And this could have this could be is that the skinny side? This could be on the bottom. Yeah. So this one's going to show off that part, and the bottom one's going to show off that part. I think that's perfect. I think that's really, really perfect. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is cut off each one. All I can say to you is don't do any cutting until you totally know. Like, don't get rid of anything until you're really clear on what, what you're going to do. So I am going to go... And I tried ripping because I do think that would look cool. And this thin fabric, it just it tears beautifully, but it just destroys the fat, the big piece that was left. It, it did not did not tear well for this project. All right, so knowing that I'm going to have this lip, I'm going to have it right under there. This then becomes the bottom. And I don't want to have it come all the way down to the bottom. As a matter of fact, since I'm doing half and half, I think I'm going to have it come. Oops, I'm doing it. Oops. Wait. This is the white. Yeah. So this is going to be at the top. Oh, I'm so glad I figured that out. Okay. All right. So, um, so I'm going, I'm figuring out where to cut it. So this is going to go like that. And then I'm going to have some of this show. Oh, this is the top, so it's going to be shorter than the bottom, too. Okay. So I think, I think I'm going to cut it right above here. Since that is my next one, this is the flower that's going to show. So I'm going to cut it. First, I'm going to cut it in half. This is the top, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to cut it right above. I'm going to cut it there. So let me just see. It's going to go like that. It's going to be a lot of the underneath one showing, which is great. I think that's how it should be. Okay. In a real, in a real, you know, sample of fabric, they're often layered when it's a big pattern. Otherwise, you don't get the whole pattern. So they will layer it, and they'll usually show it in different colorways too. All right, so that's beautiful, and that lends itself to. I'm just thinking about this. down a little bit so that the flowers in the yeah I'll cut it down but is that perfect oh my gosh I think you can tell it's fabric I don't know I'm sure most people would just flip thinking it's a piece of paper but anyway that's cool I was wondering about that okay so we got number one I mean, number, yeah, top one. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I like a little bit showing on the sides. Looks more realistic. And now, I'm going to, well, I know I'm going to have to get rid of this side, so let's just cut it. So, it's the beginning of the week here. 
I hope you guys are having something to look forward to this week. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I like my weeks. I, I like what I do. I'm a happy. <laughs> I'm a happy person in my work and life in general, so I'm grateful for that. If you don't like very much, you need to get something in your life you really like, and if it's crafting, then don't give it up. Whatever you do. Now, I do not want this. Oh, oh, wait. Wait. I'm putting this beige one on top. No, I mean on the bottom. Okay. So, okay. Gosh. I make mistakes when I'm alone, too, so I cannot blame it on you guys. <laughs> Even though I want to. Okay. All right. So there you go. So that's the that's the bigger size. And, yeah, I think there's a nice difference there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this up here. I'm going to cut down the sides. And then this is going to be... I keep hearing something tapping the door, but I let the dog in, so... I don't know. Oh my gosh, I think that's my dog again. <laughs> I'm upstairs. She's on the deck if she's there. And then there's, of course, another way out from downstairs. Okay, so look at that lineup. I don't want to get too much, um, too much. Okay, wait. I'm. I've got to go see with my dog. Hold on one sec. Oh my gosh. Hello, goofball. Okay, enough. Just take a nap. Okay, so let me think. I'm not thinking very clearly. Let me let me do the side. Let me start with that. I'm gonna have it be just a tad whiter. I don't want it too much whiter because I want the card to show. So that's my main main thing here. confused because there's not that much of a difference. I suppose when you're sitting there watching me, you certainly see it, but I almost... It was the width not being wide enough that clued me in. Okay. Okay. So now I've got to get the length, and then we're ready to start gluing. Okay, so that's going to be like that. And, yeah. So since that's a repeat, well, it's kind of cute, actually. You know, I'm starting to have second thoughts about maybe, I mean, that doesn't look very intriguing, whereas if I were to put this like that, and then cut this away, and have this hang down, that would be more interesting. Let's see. Let's see. thing. Well, I have to pick it up. I have to pick it up more. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what I'm going to do. All right. Let me cut off this bottle. Okay. 
Yeah, don't cut until you've checked everything out. It just isn't worth it. Because, you know, it's time-consuming preparing the paper, preparing the fabric, ironing, cutting, waiting. Okay. Okay. So now, probably... There we go. I want that. I'd like to get some of that purple cranberry in there. Okay, let's go like that. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, I can cut more off the bottom. Yeah. I love playing with fabric like this. Well, it's not different really than playing with paper, if you ask me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is. Of course, this is nice having these leaves here. Yeah, it actually is a nice layout. But I don't want to have it that far down. Okay. Not very interesting, though, is it? Okay. And the difference in the pink is starting to really be obvious to me. So, I'm thinking that I may need to make this what goes on top. And then put... This one on the bottom. Let's see now, how would it go? It would go like... Let's see. Yeah. But then again, the difference in the color is actually not appealing. I think I need to stick with one fabric. I think that's what I have to do. And since I already cut the top off the one, okay, so this is out of the picture because I already cut that in half, and this is the whiter side. So I am going to not use this white one for this. Remember I cut it off and put it in the CD window? So what I'm going to do then Okay, so I'm going to have this on the top. I wish I hadn't cut that white off now. Bummer. Oh, look, it's getting more beige because of the background versus the screen. Yeah. Okay, so if this is on top. There we go. And then cut this off here. And then I'm going to have to cut all the sides to fit that one. hang behind okay let me look at this again and see if I can maybe get everything out of this one piece I was thinking we would have the see through on top and so I was really trying to make that happen but now that's not what I'm thinking so, with that out of the picture, I could put this on top really short, and then this wouldn't really have to be all the way to the top, because I'm now aware that, because this does change the color, you can see, look, here it is pinky beige, and here it is green beige, not really, but it's a different color here. So with that in mind, I don't necessarily want something that's going to be right behind there. So if I let this go to, say, well, these are cute, so I don't really want to. I have to bring this up so that it can be showing. Okay, I think I've got to cut this short. 
and then push this up a bit. Wow, this is tricky. This is tricky. I'm sure it doesn't have to be this complicated, but that doesn't change the fact that it is to me. <laughs> because I want both to get, I want to see this and I want to see that. And I don't want to lose anything. But I think that's not possible. And I want some of the card to show at the bottom. So if this was hung here, just like that, if this was just glued down, that would leave this to be at the top. I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to do it right now. Because then you get one of these here, and then that there isn't really important. This is what matters, and I can always cut it off at the bottom. Okay. So let's hope I can see this crease when I get to the other side to cut it. Okay. Yeah. Just barely. Okay. Right? No tearing. Okay, here we go. I obviously need a new blade. I have two that have this one area, two blades going, two cutters. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. This will be on top. like right before the pink gets bold. So you can see here's the fabrics under it here and not there. So there's ever so slight difference there. But it's not major. Actually it could be that long, but that's that's too long. And I'm thinking just to make it oh I can't know. They have to be the same width now. Yeah, I wish I could cut off some more of this. If I were to cut off a little more of that, it would give me a little more of the look at the bottom. So that's what I'll do. Okay, fantastic. So what I've been doing is sewing along the upper upper edge, um, and that's probably what I'll do. But but maybe not. So I might staple. But this is so um, sweet. It's very very old. I wanted to have that very old look. I think it does. I doubt they had grow green ribbon at the time that this chintz was popular, but that's okay. Maybe they did. Maybe it's a very old ribbon. Somebody gave me a ribbon machine one time. Literally, it was a manual ribbon machine and it was it was in their family and she just didn't want it anymore and I said sure and it was like a metal thing so it wasn't like it was an enormous thing and then with it came tons of ribbons and sample books and all kinds of things um, but I really wasn't into it it just it just fell flat for me I kind of was intrigued 
and it's hard to say no to her. She really did want to get rid of it. I, I returned it to her eventually. I just gave it back. I just thought, you know what, it takes up a lot of space that I don't have, and it's a long time ago. She was shocked. <laughs> but, you know, what was I going to do? I mean, it was valuable to the person who it would be valuable to. So, but I kept I kept most of the ribbons. <laughs> And there were some ribbon salesman samples and grow grain. That's how it started. It was a lot of grow grain sample books. Not books, cards, trifolds. It would fold out. Still have them. So, okay. So now, because I can't, I'm not going to my sewing machine. Um, I'm going to glue this. And I'm going to use our glitter glue. And when I want something, oops, this does not look straight. This looks a little crooked, which bothers me. Now it's even probably crookeder. Okay. I'm going to just put it right, right there. Oh, okay, I'm just going to glue it so it looks straight to me. Okay. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. Yeah, okay. So then that's going to go like that. It's not going to be much of it showing. <clears throat> the only thing I could do, see, I don't want to cut through that flower. I think that would be a pity. So this is where I'm going to glue it. So. Moved my hand. Make sure it's under there. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then I'm going <coughs> to glue here. rounded look up there. I don't want to press it out. They don't ever look flat. They're always dimensional. They always use staples. So it's never flat because the staples are down here. It's a very thick cardboard. Okay. All right, good. And these threads coming off are, I don't really want them to. And it's not terrible. But, as they say, the yarn wasn't dyed red, cranberry. It was white, as you can tell. In the old times, they would dye the threads the color of the background. And then they would do resist or printing on top. So, then the threads hanging out would be the same color as the background. And that would be much more appealing than the white showing. Okay, so now... This little guy is next. Oh, you know why I can I'm bugged because the line. I'm assuming this is straight, but it may not be. But you see how high it is there and how low it is there. I'm just gonna see if I'm crazy or not. Let me just see. This is almost three and a half, not quite. And this is yeah, this is shorter. Darn. Well. Once I get this on here, it's probably not going to be obvious. <clears throat> okay. Now, what I'm thinking of doing, because I don't particularly like all this brown on here, is actually putting this down here. So I would actually hang over this. Well, I'd get rid of the white. Yeah. So we cut off. 
just to add a little more paper to it, just to make it a little bit more, um, you know, just to decorate it more. I, you know, I told you I cut that out, so. Okay, so since I'm just going to have that base showing. All right, this is the perfect spot, so let's glue it while we can. I don't want to lay that down until it dries, which with our glitter glue is quick, so it won't be a problem, but I don't want the fabric sticking to it. Wow. Oh, I just love how it's working out. Love, love, love. Okay, let's cut this and see. I mean, maybe I won't end up using it. First of all, I don't know if I like that ripped edge or not. If I do, then I need to rip this edge. So, okay, let me rip it then. This is the bottom <clears throat> of a printable from Souvenirs de la France, and I made my last tall journal that I showed you. I think it's my current. No, it's, it's my. It's the uh, video before this, the last one. The last one is the textile salesman sample books, which is where I got this idea. But I had the idea to print some of Chapter One papers papers on to, oh my gosh, my focus, I have it on. Oh, I hope it hasn't been out of focus long. Okay, so if I put it on lock, focus lock, then the colors change. And then I can't ever bring anything up for you to see it closer. So I've opted to not do the photo lock, which means that you'll get some of these moments where it's, I think what I need to do is get rid of this. That looks better. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so I could leave it open as a pocket, was my thinking. So that this could be under it to keep it flat. But I don't know how much of it will show. So let's see. Yeah, but that's cool looking, isn't it? Oh my gosh, it's so cool looking. So if I cut off that top, although I like that French writing so much, or I could have just the French writing. of this. I think that looks good. I like the whole thing. That's the problem. I like it all. I like it all. And I also like that a lot. Darn, what do I do? I'm not sure what I want to do. I'm 
and looking at the monitor. That looks pretty. Now this, of course, it would be on the other side. I think I do like the smaller. I'll save that for something else. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So I am going to put it, try to cut this straight. That's straight. Okay. I'll use this on the next one because I'll be making another. Okay. So then the question becomes do I make it like a little pocket I can tuck into? I mean, there's like really going to be tight, but I'm going to try it because I think it's a cool idea. Okay. All right, so ever so, ever so. I still have not found my glue bottle. It has a skinny top. A little tiny thing. I, and I recently filled it, so that's my biggest bummer is that I actually recently filled it and I mean, there's a lot of glues in there that I would rather have in the bottom I can use. Oh, I've got to brown this. I found an old basting bottle, based, basting glue bottle, in my sewing stuff, quilting sewing stuff. And it's a, a heavy duty, hardy. Uh, bottle with a screw cap that has a pin and a long nozzle. I mean, truly beautiful. So I'm going to try it. The basting glue is water soluble. So I don't know if it's good enough to do, uh, use on paper. But I have a large refill and then a smaller bottle. So it's quite appropriate if I can. If I find that it works, I'll use it. And if it doesn't, then I'll replace it. And hope that the nozzle will handle my my uh, our glitter glue. Oh my goodness, there we go. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Oh my gosh, I love this. Hope you like it too. I got this beautiful thing on the back. Milner and Draper. So there you go. Oh my gosh, that is so great. I suppose there's other things I could do to it, but I don't know. I like simple. I'm 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 a simple. I vote for simple every time. Um, sometimes there'd be paper on one, so when you picked it up, you wouldn't get the fabric dirty. So that's a possibility. I'll have to think about it. I'd probably fold it on the bottom and just have the top showing, but we'll see. All right, love, love, love. Okay, so let me show you um, this other one. That's our time like. Oh my god, we've got an hour. Okay. Well then obviously I can't do it. But I'll just show you what I have in mind and then we'll we'll get off. Okay. So this came out of here. This is a larger version. <clears throat> this is probably ten inch. And so I, I went through a lot of their kits, and I found where I could cut things out that were connected. I cut one out like this, too, where I cut here and I cut here. So this part's flapping forward, and then this one obviously goes like that. And then when you flap it forward, you have to print the back, and that put this upside down. And they do offer this as an individual piece in their kit, but I didn't have it handy. So, I mean, I'd already used it, and I, I didn't want to print out a whole other sheet just for that. So I'm going to glue this on here, maybe cut it down a little bit on the corners. But I think that's sufficient for covering it, although I like the color of this better. Oh, yeah, here's the other one. So these would be smaller fabrics. And then this 
is the fabric version on the original very thin white of this paper. This is from their kit called August Promise. And I knew in, in the fall I would be bringing it out because it's just such beautiful fall colors. Changed completely. Now this was very um, white, extra white paper. This is too. But it looks really different from that. Don't ask me why. I printed this, you know, few, uh, several months ago. And this probably two. Well, this is the larger version. This is the full sheet. So it's a close-up of the wreath design. And so it just showed, it just shows up differently. Made small, it looks more like this. They're ideal to go with this. I mean, they couldn't be any closer. They're so perfect. So I thought I would cut, cut this up to, um, you know, pick two different parts. And then, like I just did, and put them inside. This might be just this part, or I might get that dark flower. See, this has got that delicate thing, and this has got it's actually kind of a postage thing, but I don't care. So, um, so this I might go with something a little bulkier, and this I'll try to stay maybe with these delicate red. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Put these reds on there, and then this one... I think I'll go with this darker over here because of the black ink and because I really like it. Yeah, simple. And then I have one more I'll show you real quick. So this is still on the paper. And this is the more heavy duty. Now, give yourself a, um, You know, don't print it to bleed to the corner because you do get it, or I do anyway, I get some black markings on, in my printer, you know, because I use it so much. It's got a lot of stuff up there. So, um, I know it's going to look good. It's going to look lighter, that's for sure. And this is the original, but you can see it was dyed to look different colors in different places, or what they copied was patinaed. And so, again, this is from their kit called Summer Summer Something. It's kind of a recent kit, Summer Something. So we have Ritzy, August Promise, Summer Something, and then, um, yeah. Oh, so then this little guy, he, he's from their earlier one. Um, Petit Fleur. Petit Fleur. You guys, I would use this every day all the time. If I <laughs> didn't buy so many kits and get so in love with so many. But honestly, I just love this. Because this is so accurate. So incredibly accurate from the very early times of cotton. Very early. Love it. Okay, so this one I wanted to show you um, can be just for papers. You know, it doesn't have to be fabric. As long as you pick it, this is a, you know, a popular one going around, but I happen to get this one from Kelly's Crafts. So you just, you know, fold your back up, find something interesting to fold on that makes it look like it could be a cover. And then this is one of Chapter 1's papers from another kit. You'll see. I can't remember. It might be their um, it'll work one. I bet I bet it might be that from last Christmas. And then, you know, put a bunch of papers on. Or I might put another piece of fabric over it, but I'm thinking I'm going to glue it down. And then this one, I like this. So I would glue. I will take this off and I will do a flip for this. And then I'm probably going to put one of these labels up here. Might be this one. Might be this one. I like this number, so I don't want to mess it up. Or, you know, I might take one of their um, larger Obama Marsh. Or, who knows? I also had this. This, I believe, is from Ruby and Pearl. It would just fit. So if I cut this, I can include the Paris and still get the number. 
it would cover the entire cute thing. So I'd be more inclined, I think, to do it here, but it's too wide. So I don't know. I might save it for something else. But I think you get my drift, and I'm really cognizant of the time right now, so I don't, I don't want to take any more. But I hope you will try it. I think it, I think it's worth the time and effort. And Chapter One Papers has lots and lots of fabrics that were, I mean, papers that were based on fabrics. You might have thought this was a wallpaper, and it might have been, but it was also a fabric. And why not print, print on fabric, right? <laughs> and I'm sure there's other things you can do too. So let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear if this was new to you, if this was helpful, if you liked the outcome. I'd love to hear your thoughts, really. And um, thank you to all my subscribers. I'm very grateful and just hope I'm pleasing you and I'm worth time. And that's it. So uh, have fun and take care. Bye-bye.